Thank you, Mr. Williams, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, this afternoon, as per usual, it's my task to share with you the HUC situation report for today, Wednesday, June the 23rd. We have been uh, trying to contain this present uh, COVID-19 outbreak. Now, we first identified uh, this outbreak on May 19th. So over this past four-week period, uh, a total of 351 COVID-19 cases have been added to the Federation's tally. Over this same period, 47 uh, persons who have been diagnosed with COVID have since recovered. So to date, we have 47 recoveries within this four-week period. Uh, as at right now, uh, the, the cater of case managers, they are monitoring 301 active cases, 301 active cases. Uh, at present, we have seven uh, individuals uh, hospitalized on our COVID ward. Uh, and these, well, uh, we have a cumulative total of uh, 23 hospitalizations over this four week period. And there are three COVID related deaths so far. Now this slide shows the the number of newly diagnosed cases per day. And so today we have added uh, 19 uh, positive cases yesterday, 12, and you can see uh, the numbers as outlined on the, on the bars on the graph. This just shows that uh, when, you, when we look at the data on the, uh, the, the cases that we've added over this four week period, uh, majority of the cases fall within the age range 20 to 49 years. However, the age range extends from uh, childhood to those to persons over 60 years of age. When you disaggregate the data, the, the male-female ratio is, is almost equal. So at present or to date, meaning over the past, uh, from last year, March to present, we have a total. And so our COVID-19 tally stands at 396 for the Federation, 15 cases uh, reported in Nevis, and 381 cases in Kitts. Uh, we have a total number of 92 persons recovering uh, between last year to present, and as I said before, uh, 301 active cases, seven hospitalizations, and uh, three COVID-19 related deaths so far. I want to utilize this opportunity or this forum uh, to reach out to the, the family, the loved ones of uh, those who have passed, we want to extend our deepest condolences uh, to the family and loved ones of the deceased persons at this time. With respect to the outbreak at Her Majesty's Prison in St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, we have identified a total of uh, 39 uh, positive inmates, they have been isolated, they are being monitored uh, as we speak. We will continue to provide you additional detail as information becomes available. Now with respect to this outbreak, uh, we continue to employ uh, the well-known public health interventions that have proven the test of time. So we have a uh, a robust contact tracing process, which continues. Uh, we continue testing, uh, testing all cases, their contacts, and even targeted and random testing are being con uh, conducted. In terms of our COVID-19 vaccination program, we continue our rollout. Uh, this, uh, this we started on February the 22nd, and it continues uh, to date. 
and uh, we continue in terms of the restriction of movement in an attempt to curtail or to help us to contain uh, this outbreak and flatten the curve. In terms of contact tracing, our cater of contact tracers, we've interviewed, we've engaged over 2,100 individuals already. They have been placed in self-quarantine. Uh, to date, over 1,300 of these individuals have been released from self-quarantine, and we have almost 900 remaining in self-quarantine. <coughs> In terms of testing, we continue uh, operating our mobile units. We have two mobile units. Uh, we have individuals walking into the respiratory or the COVID side of our emergency room. We've also established a, a drive-through mobile testing unit at the back of the GNF General Hospital. And, uh, you know, across these uh, four, four you know, testing teams, we have conducted over 7,000, or we have processed over 7,400 samples over this four month period. And so we continue testing. And as I said before, testing of cases, testing of contacts, we also conduct targeted testing and random testing. Now, in terms of our vaccine rollout, now, uh, we get a lot of questions about this tile, and I wanted to spend some time to explain it. Uh, again, we, uh, our target is the adults in our population. And so based on our last census, 33,037 individuals, uh, uh, these are the adults in our population, and that's the, the number of persons. These are the number of adults in our population as highlighted uh, through data from our last census. And so that's our target population, 33,037. And so over this four month period, we have covered 67.9% of the 33,037 with the first dose. So 67.9% of the 33,037 individuals have been covered with the first dose. And 36% of the 33,037 individuals have been covered with the second dose or they are fully vaccinated. Or even more specifically, uh, that's 11,895 persons have been fully vaccinated. So I, yeah, as of, yeah, as of yesterday, Tuesday, as of end of work day, yesterday, Tuesday, June the 22nd. Thank you for that. All right, and so uh, the emphasis going forward is how can we live in the context of COVID-19? Uh, what, what's, what are the protective behaviors we need to adopt to live and exist safely in the context of COVID-19. Now, in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, we have an order, a shelter-in-place order. So really, you are only to move if, it, if movement is deemed essential. If you're an essential worker, or if you're going to the supermarket, the pharmacy, or you're going to access health care. Other than that, you are asked to shelter in place. Uh, we want you to wear your face mask at all times, sanitize your hands, and maintain that safe distance of six feet. When we look at the numbers, there are individuals who are expressing concern about the numbers that we report daily. Um, and so when we analyze the numbers, when we look at the data gleaned through contact, the contact tracing process, we realize that it, it's it, the, the issue or the problem is at an individual level. The contacts are still engaged uh, with individuals who may be positive and they are picking up the infection. So that tells us that individuals are still not uh, in, in complete adherence to where these non-pharmaceutical measures. So individuals are still assuming that their friends, contacts, loved ones are virus free. And so they may drop their guard. 
not wear their face masks, not sanitize after uh, interaction with such individuals, and they may not be maintaining that safe distance. And so that's why uh, most or majority of the, the recently announced cases, they are contacts of cases who have now become uh, positive with COVID-19. So it tells us that they are not wearing their face masks, they are not uh, sanitizing their hands, and they are not ensuring that safe distance between themselves and others. And so, ladies and gentlemen, going forward, uh, we can get out of this outbreak if as individuals, you, 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 and I adhere to these non-pharmaceutical uh, measures. And so everybody is asking, what, is, what are we going to do? We need to start looking at us, uh, yourself, ourselves. What am I going to do to help us to get out of this situation? And if we all play, a, we, we all have a part to play in terms of uh, adhering to these measures. So what are these COVID-19 protective behaviors that we really need to adopt on a daily basis? It's important for us to keep on that face mask. Uh, if you're moving for work, if you're an essential worker, and if you're working in the grocery store, if you're working in the pharmacy, if you're working in the healthcare setting, uh, if you're working in the bank, these are the entities that remain open. If you're working in the restaurant uh, where persons can order take out, it's your role and responsibility to keep your face mask on, covering nose and mouth at all times. Yes? And so this is very, very important. Let us not assume that the individual you're interacting with is virus-free. Another protective behavior, hand washing, sanitizing your hands, especially after touching high-touch surfaces. The doorknobs you push open going into the pharmacy, the restaurant to collect your food, the bank, the countertops uh, at, the, at the cashier, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, these are high-touch surfaces. You must sanitize your hands after touching these surfaces. Hand washing is very critical at this point in time. And when you're going into the grocery store, there is a lady or there is a gentleman ready to sanitize your hands. But please remember, you need to sanitize your hands after you put away the trolley, after you would have you know, unpacked the groceries in your vehicle. And then when you get home, you need to sanitize your, your actual grocery items. You put them away and then wash your hands again. Very, very important hand washing, especially at this point in time. Maintaining that safe distance, especially when visiting uh, the older adults, when visiting the older adults with underlying comorbidities. For example, an, uh, a grandma, a mother who is over 70, who has diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, uh, asthma, please maintain a safe in, uh, distance of six feet or more from these individuals. Uh, let's not assume that they are virus-free. Let, let us not assume that you and I are virus-free when interacting with these individuals. Protect them by remaining that safe distance away. So you take groceries, you take food, uh, you make sure you sanitize same before you hand over, and then you maintain your distance, and then you leave. All right, maintain a safe distance from other patrons uh, when you go to the supermarket, to the bank, or to the pharmacy. And we maintain that safe distance when interacting with friends, relatives, and loved ones. A number of our recent cases are contacts of cases who are friends, relatives, and loved ones. So it's very, very important for us to adhere to these measures and start practicing these measures every day. And uh, in so doing, you'll be protecting yourselves and your contacts uh, from, from the virus. Remember, uh, the vaccine is still available. We have vaccines uh, available 
Um, the, the present batch expires on June 30. We want those who have come on board and have received the first dose, remember to look on your card and if uh, remember your second appointment, come out to get your second dose of that vaccine uh, well ahead of the expiry date or well ahead of June uh, 30. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Laws. I want to recognize the presence of the Attorney General, the Honorable Vincent Barron, Jr., the Chair of the Disaster Mitigation Council. I would now like to invite Mr. Abdias Samuel, who is the Chair of the National COVID-19 Task Force and the National Disaster Coordinator at the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA to give us his presentation. Mr. Williams, thank you and good afternoon to everyone uh, who is watching by uh, various form. 